it's December 4th. I'm going to show you a couple of quick uh, landings at Castle Airport in Merced, California. Uh, we're getting ready. Nice weather. A little cold, real cold. In fact, 34 degrees today. Uh, what we're doing here is uh, prepping the plane to take off. Let it warm up. Uh, setting the altimeter. Uh, let's see, what else am I doing? Oh, I want to check the control surfaces here in just a second. I've already turned on the auxiliary fuel pump for takeoff. And uh, you'll see in a little bit where we have to push the stick on this particular gyro simulation. The only way the stick will pre rotate is with it completely forward. And so the normal practice of letting it get up to about 100 and pulling it back to about mid position, here we're testing the control surfaces. Anyhow, pulling it back to mid position uh, and then continuing to pre rotate up to 100 before you let go with the pre rotator and uh, hit the full throttle to take off. Uh, it doesn't work on this one because the minute you pull it back from the forward position it cuts out the pre-rotator and you're stuck at 100 rpm so you do have a choice of just accelerating gradually up to uh, 80 90 miles an hour which you probably wouldn't want to be doing on the runway anyhow you can see we pre-rotate it to 100 and now we're kicking it up we're already at 80 90 100 miles an hour, and you'll see it take off, but there's some real bad rotor shutter when you do that. Yeah, see the rotor shutter here? Whoa, it just shudders like crazy. Anyhow, I'm going to stick with you during this whole video. At the end, I'll do some outtakes from yesterday, December 3rd, that were not pretty. Uh, how not to land, uh, and what it looks like when you uh, crash a gyro into the ground. Uh, several times. Uh, practice is practice. Even if you practice what not to do, uh, and I'll explain as we go through those outtakes what's happening. But anyhow, we've uh, caught up to about uh, 750 feet here. Uh, we took off actually in the opposite direction. We took off downwind, which is not again recommended. Also attributes to some of the rotor shutter when you lift off. Uh, anyhow, we're making our turn here. We're coming back, and now we're going uh, into the wind, and we'll see what we can do here. Pretty nice day. Again, it was very cold this morning. Uh, we had a freeze warning, first one of the season and uh, got down to, I think, only 33 or 34. I haven't checked the overnight temperature to see if it actually got below freezing. It was a decent amount of frost on everything this morning. But beautiful day right now. If it wasn't so freaking cold, it'd be a great day to be out flying. But when you're flying, uh, few degrees in difference in temperature and one of these open cockpits can make the difference between being able to feel your fingers and toes and your face and not. Anyhow, what I did there, uh, I'll, uh, you didn't catch it, but I was chattering away. But anyhow, I was coming in way high. I was about 700 feet, so I pulled back, let it vertically uh, to about 40 miles an hour, let it drop, and then picked up the speed. We're doing real good here. We're at about 25 miles an hour, holding it off, holding it off. Kind of a hard landing because I was, didn't have enough forward speed to keep the, uh, the stick all the way back. But anyhow, we're taking off again. We're going to do a couple of liftoffs and uh, cut the throttle back again. I already cut it back. And not bad, not bad holding the wheel up, which you would do on an MTO or one of the wheels with a non castering nose wheel. Uh, on this one, it's like a Magni. It does have a castering nose wheel, so it's uh, actually on the, the more approved list in my mind. Anyhow, we accelerating back up here at 70. I'm going to pull back on the stick a little bit. 
let it balance it on the mains, lift it up real nice here, real nice. Uh, normally you'd be picking up about 45, 50 miles an hour. Cut the throttle back again down to about 3,000 RPM, letting it just drift, 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 holding it just almost to level flight. Now it's dropping about 200 feet per minute. Coming in, I'm going to pull back here and see if I can get it to you. Yep, comes back up to low flight. Just hold on it, hold it, hold it. Keep it up, keep it up. Down to about 40 miles an hour. Yeah, a little hard, a little hard. Anyhow, we'll try this again. Get back on the center line. Uh, I need to zoom the screen back in here. And... So you can see, now we're up to about 50 miles an hour, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. Balancing on the mains, lifting off. And get back on the center line here, drifted off. Actually, I don't know how that happened. But anyhow, we're circling back around, going to cross midfield and go at it again. This is kind of the boring part because it's just flying, but who knows? Anyhow, here we are. Headed south on the east side of the Castle Airstrip, 11,000 some odd feet. I always forget the exact numbers, but just for general practice, we'll call it 11,000 feet. Uh, actually, I never would be flying out here because there's so much traffic. Not so much this time of year because no fire danger, but in the summertime when the fire people are here. Yeah, it's a busy, busy place. It's also a control tower airport. But I could fly in there. Maybe someday. <coughs> the nice guy I'll be flying in and out of there, but for now I'm going to be flying out of Merced Municipal, which... If we kept flying a straight line, we'd fly right over it. It's about four miles, something like that. The difference between the two airports, four, maybe five, I don't know exactly. I'd have to check it on the sectional or my iPad or whatever you would have. Anyhow, uh, back up to about 550 feet here. Uh, I'm cutting the throttle back to keep my speed down. I'm getting my speed down down to 70 now. I like to come in nice and slow. The slower the better, the more control it takes. But you don't want to get too slow or you lose rudder, rudder authority. And then you're uh, kind of just putting your life in the hands of whether you're going to land straight or not straight. So... Anyhow, we're on uh, base for the air for the strip going again into the wind. This makes it a lot easier. Okay, so now we're down to oh, 60, and we'll be able to hold it here once we get in. Coming in down to 400 feet. Still at 60. Coming down about 700 feet a minute. Now we're going to start pulling back just gradually down to 300 feet, down a 500 foot descent. Nice uh, effect with the shadow here. You can kind of see what the plane's doing. Now we're down to about 25. Hold it off. Oh, hard. Hard, hard, hard. Oh, well. Anyhow. That's all we're going to do for now. We're not going to push our luck. I'm going to park this thing, and then I'll show you a few art of the outtakes from yesterday where the wind was 13 knots at 350 degrees out of the north. Uh, a little bit windy, and I was pushing this thing pretty hard. But I'll show you what not to do. But there's some pretty spectacular uh, crashes in here. Uh, all of which I obviously survived, since this is only the make-believe world of simulation. But in the real world, you'd be dead in a doornail, and you'd be wouldn't even have to be buried because you'd be, already be buried in the ground about six feet. Uh, it's a good plane, though. Flies pretty well. 
very much like a Magna M16. Uh, probably I'd say the second rated one. Uh, I like it better than the MTO models only because of the castoring nose wheel. Okay, so we're going to click on the rotor blake here, which is pneumatic, and for some reason it clicked right back off, and I thought it was on. But I'm standing here or looking, being photographed here, and you notice the rotor ain't slowing down. So what the heck's going on here? Check it again. Uh, I'm going to click it there. Now she's on. Air pressure's up, and you see the rotor free rot or rotates down real fast with that pneumatic. Now we'll zoom in and we'll shut off first the uh, fuel pump master bags and the engine's off and we're parked. So that's basically it for today. There we are parked on a little one of the old staging areas where they used to keep planes ready to take off when the military was here. This is an outtake from yesterday. That was a pretty hard landing, or actually on the, ta on the tarmac, playing around. And uh, you can take this thing off pretty easily. That was on the north end of the tarmac, way up where once upon a time when I was at an air show, that's where they had all the ultralights. There was a gyro though. Here's another landing where I got the nose wheel up. And we're going to take off and really get up some speed over the airport. And I'm going to do the maximum climb where you can see the, uh, well, I don't have it zoomed in, but you'll see what's happening here. Uh, I think this is the section. Yeah, now I'm letting it back down again. Oop, again hard. See, those were hard landings yesterday, and it wasn't wasn't taking advantage of the wind, but ripping up some of the turf there, probably took out a landing light or two, oops, trying to go directly into the wind, just enough throttle to keep her over the ground, okay, so I get up here, bank, and we're going to come back around, not sure what's happening here. I guess I'm just showing you what it looks like from the third party view if you had somebody flying along behind you and flying. Anyhow, I got a couple of quick takes here and you'll see some pretty dramatic crashes. Uh, what happens if you try to push it way too hard? Anyhow, this was yesterday, not today. Getting around here. Gonna bank back in, and then I'll cut out, and you'll see just the touchdown on this one. Not too bad, not too bad. But you can see what happens. Oop, there's the touchdown. Bounce. That was a real true touch and go. Now we're trying to take off. Woo! Didn't have enough power. Behind the power curve there, that's what it's called. Pull the throttle way back, way back, boom, boom, really trying to, oh, ah, uh, now I have a headache, that was the first crash, uh, here's another one coming in, where we're taking off, now we're already taking off, and we're just powering it up, we're doing right now 120 miles an hour, pull the stick back as hard as you can, try to climb vertically, what that causes is the rotor to stall. And when the rotor stalls, this is what happens. Down you go. Hit the ground, bounce like a rubber ball. Nope, that wouldn't really happen. You'd be on the ground. So that's what happens when you try to climb too hard, too fast. Can't do it. Watch that stick. So anyhow, that's enough for today. We'll see you next time. That's all, folks.